What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. Been gone here for, what, like two months, three months, whatever it's been. Um, obviously taking a summer break after the draft. Um, it was fun to get to do the draft stream with you guys, and then I decided to take a break. Was really busy with work, was trying to focus on things with that, and said I'll start to come back as the offseason comes to a near close. And now the New York Giants are getting ready for training camp in 10 short days. So definitely have a lot more content up. I plan to go live at least once a week solo. I'm going to be going live with Bad Dog, of course, on our show probably in a week or two. I know Pizzle, me, and him are working on a show. So looking forward to doing that weekly uh, with Bad Dog and myself. I think we're going to have Pizzle on next week. At least it appears that way off Twitter. So that should be a fun show. A lot to talk about as we get ready for the upcoming season with the New York Giants. And, you know, obviously in this video, we're going to talk about Hard Knocks. Also got a sponsor. Should have mentioned that. Uh, that You'll see the new sponsor on the channel in August. So looking forward to that as well. So a lot of, inter you know, fun, uh, exciting things for the channel. But even more importantly, fun and exciting things for the New York Giants is the season is getting set to start in two months. So it's going to be here before we know it. And hopefully the New York Giants can surprise a lot of people this year. Uh, love all you guys. Thank you guys for all you guys that always come back, support the videos. I'm excited uh, to spend another year here on YouTube with all of you guys talking about the team that we all know and love. So expect to see me live a lot and definitely dropping some videos along the way. But I really wanted to dive into the Hard Knocks episodes. As you guys know, if you've watched my channel over the last five, six years, however long it's been, um, I'm not a big uh, Hard Knocks guy. I, I, I watch it. I, I find it interesting, but I was never a big guy that wanted to see the New York Giants on Hard Knocks. I always thought it would be viewed, you know, it could be a distraction. And I think that's the way the New York Giants viewed it as well. John Mara, uh, why he would always kind of, you know, uh, steer away uh, when the New York Giants always got opportunities to be on this show because you worry about the cameras and, you know, all the off-field attention that it could cause. While you're in training camp, you kind of want the team to be focused. And although as a fan, selfishly, I always thought it would be fun and exciting to get a more, you know, in-depth look of the players on the football team and the inner workings of the, uh, you know, of the organization. I always thought it was in the New York giants best interest on the field to not partake in something like this. Now, this to me is kind of a best case scenario because there's no real player involvement outside of the guys that are potentially being drafted. But in terms of, you know, it, it potentially serving as a distraction from within the locker room during training camp, you don't have to worry about that. There's no training camp involved uh, in this portion of Hard Knocks that the New York Giants are going to be on. It's going to be five episodes. They're already two episodes in. And thus far, they're kind of up to about a week before uh, free agency starts. And you've seen a lot of interesting things from behind the scenes, whether it be regarding Saquon Barkley, whether it be, you know, regarding Brian Burns, uh, the inner workings of Joe Shane, how he prepares for the media, how he kind of wants to construct this football team. Um, you know, the impact of a guy like a Brandon Brown getting to see the scouts analyze the players. It's just fun um, and enlightening as a fan of the New York Giants to really get to see how this team, uh, you know, comes to the conclusions that they do when they make the decisions that they do in the offseason. So I actually think this is like a perfect scenario as a fan. I feel like this is more educational than the traditional hard knocks where you kind of just get the behind the scenes look with the players get to see how that you know the, how, what they do off the field that's all that's fun and you know all well and good but this you actually get to see how you know at least this interests me more getting to see how the general manager the coach come to the decisions that they do as they're constructing their roster for the following season so I think this was a great decision by the Giants to go on hard knocks and as a fan um I love it I I, I think it's been great I think there's been a lot of interesting tidbits and you know I'll touch on some of them throughout this video at least in the last episode that I found interesting. But the one thing that I take out of it thus far is, I mean, Joe Shane is meticulous, man. Joe Shane is definitely a guy that thinks everything out. Now, a lot of people are down on Joe Shane because it's been two years. The team hasn't done well. And I'm not all in on Joe Shane. He still has a lot more to prove. Um, and this team's got to, you know, obviously start to right the ship. You know, I, I said when he took the job, he's, he's getting four years for me and he's gonna. He's getting at least four years for me before I come to the conclusion that I say, as a fan, I can only speak for myself, it's time to replace this guy. But, it's been up and down, right? His first year, the team overachieved. Last year, obviously, a regression. And you could point to several factors. Injuries, like Shane talked about on Hard Knocks with the offensive line, how the team was a disaster. But at the same time, Joe, you were the guy that built that offensive line, right? So I could see both sides of it, people that are down on Joe Shane. But I don't know. I, I just feel like he's a guy that is meticulous. He prepares for everything. I thought the, the stuff with the media, how you saw him training, um, I, I guess that was maybe somebody from the media department with the New York Giants that was preparing him 
uh, for the onslaught of questions that he was going to get at the uh, at the uh, combine. Uh, and Joe Shane basically verbatim saying exactly what he said to that guy, uh, to the you know, various members of the media during the combine and just getting to see his preparation for that, seeing how seriously he takes that is a stark contrast to Dave Gettleman, for example. Right. We all remember Dave Gettleman. He was kind of off the cuff, you know, and sometimes it was funny, but he was he didn't seem at least from a media standpoint as a guy that took his job nearly as seriously as a guy like Joe Shane does in terms of preparation, preparing for the questions that are going to be asked. Um, so and, and showing a great deal of respect for all the members of the media while answering it. Well, Dave was kind of the complete opposite. Um, but I think that was, for me at least, that was one of the more interesting things uh, in this episode, getting a, a, an in-depth look of how Joe Shane prepares with the media. Of course, the headline gra- grabbing things, which we're going to talk about, Saquon Barkley, um, of course, the Brian Burns thing. And we'll start there. Um, and of course, whenever a trade's going to go down, the opposing team's always going to shoot high and they're going to have a number that they're willing to come down to. Um, but when you see what the Carolina Panthers initially were asking the New York Giants for, I think it was released in the first episode, if I'm not mistaken, they were looking for two first round picks for Brian Burns. And then I think Shane in this episode, and the trade hasn't gone down yet, at least in the timeline of the show. But in this episode, Joe Shane, I think, came back at them, if I heard him correctly, with two second round picks. And the Panthers said, plus, we want something else, like a day three pick or whatever it may be. Ultimately, of course, we know the outcome of the trade. And the New York Giants, I believe, ended up giving up the 39th overall pick, which was a second round pick. It, I think it was a conditional fifth round pick and, and a fourth round pick. Like It was like three day three picks and a second round pick. Ultimately, what they paid for Brian Burns, which is a far cry <laughs> from what the Panthers were initially asking for, for two first round picks. And, you know, if you look over the, the course of history throughout the NFL, generally speaking, if you're getting a upper echelon edge rusher, which Brian Burns is, especially at his age, you're usually going to pay at least one first round pick or certainly two seconds. So uh, it shows that Joe Shane drives a hard bargain. We already knew that as Giants fans with the way that he handled Saquon last year um, and his contract that he wasn't willing to uh, budge off of his number. But he was able to get the deal done for much less uh, than what the Panthers were uh, initially asking for. So Shane kind of called their bluff, and he was able to take advantage of it and get a you know a really young 25-year-old pass rusher, 26, whatever he is, uh, that should help this team a lot this year. So I thought that was cool to see the inner workings of that trade, the GMs going back and forth. Of course, you also got a behind-the-scenes uh, look. It was brief uh, in the episode, but still getting to see Shane uh, go to the uh, New England uh, room at the combine and talk with their general manager Elliot Wolf, who he has, I think he has prior ties to, if I'm not mistaken. Um, ha- having him talk to him and telling Elliot Wolf, listen, if something pops up, uh, you know, on draft day, give us a call. We're certainly interested in pick number three. So that kind of cements home that rumor that kind of, I think it came, started to really come out after the draft, slightly and maybe on draft day that the Giants were contemplating moving up to three. That proved to be true based off this series that the Giants at least inquired about it. Now, I always think that I always thought if you watch me and I think a lot of people, I wasn't alone on this, I uh, thought that the New York Giants were going to end up selecting Malik Neighbors. And I always think that Joe Shane thought that way, too. Um, but he was covering all bases, right? If New England is <laughs> willing to trade out, we would certainly entertain it. But I think the way that he handled the offseason trading the second round pick to get a guy like Brian Burns certainly set it up so that Joe Shane probably felt the most likely scenario would be that New England wouldn't trade out and they would end up with Malik Neighbors. But it just showed you, a scenario, you know, that Joe Shane was covering all of his bases, right? The complete opposite of Dave Gettleman. We remember when Dave Gettleman had the second overall pick and he wasn't even answering phone calls. Uh, he admitted to that, <laughs> happily admitted to that, that he didn't answer phone calls and he, you know, thought that Saquon was touched by the hand of God. Um, Joe Shane is the complete opposite. Uh, you know, he was willing to trade up, willing to trade down. Um, he's willing to listen to try to do whatever he can uh, to help best help his football team. So not that it was ever going to happen, but I think it's encouraging to see that Joe Shane was willing uh, to move up under the right circumstance. Now, some people will speculate that that may not have been for a quarterback. I think you have to assume that it more than likely was. Most people naturally are going to assume Drake may um, for ver- various reasons. Um, obviously, as the draft got closer and closer, you know, Jaden Daniels was strongly linked to the Washington commanders. Drake may always seem like the ideal fit for the giants. When you look at the history of the Buffalo bills, Drake may is a very similar quarterback, at least from a tool standpoint to a guy like Josh Allen, big mobile runs guys over big arm. Um, 
So he always just felt like the desirable quarterback for the Giants, at least for me. Um, so I think it was probably for me, but I, and I also think it was probably for a quarterback. But that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. When you pick a top six in a rich quarterback draft class, as Joe Shane said throughout this episode, you have a quarterback that's had three significant injuries in the last two years. You have to at least explore those options. The options weren't there. The New York Giants selected the next best thing. And that's Malik Neighbors, who I think is going to be tremendous for this football team this year. And I'm really looking forward to it. And, you, you know, it was, it was cool to see Dable, and we'll get into Dable as well throughout this uh, episode, uh, when he kind of, you know... Uh, Tested the quarterbacks. I thought that was really cool. But it was cool to see Dable, um, you know, before they brought neighbors in for the interview, just saying how blown away he was uh, from his physical skill set and uh, how he was really excited to interview him before he came in the door. Um, and he spent the whole day viewing his clips. So at that point, you figure that Dable, you know, probably had this guy at the top of his list of, you know, potential wide receivers that may be available at number six. But the Giants were certainly uh, in love with Malik Neighbors, and it's hard not to be. Um, the other thing, uh, Shane, when he was talking to Brandon Brown after the interview with Malik Neighbors, said that he expected Neighbors to be a little bit more. I, I forgot the exact terminology. Maybe I wrote it down, but he ex maybe maybe to have more of a big personality. That's basically what he insinuated uh, in the interview. And then Brandon Brown said, "But that's okay for a wide receiver, right? You kind of want that alpha." And Dable kind of hammered that home uh, while they were interviewing that they want a guy that wants the ball. And yeah, if you're a number one wide receiver, you should want the ball. That's how those guys are great. Um, so a lot of people were worried that neighbors may be a guy, Giants fans, I should say, that neighbors may have been a guy that they were scared to draft because they thought his personality may conflict with the type of prospect they were looking to bring in uh, from the Hard Knocks episodes thus far. Actually, it was the complete opposite. They were looking for more of a guy that wanted to be that alpha, wanted to be that commanding figure uh, in the wide receiver room, at least according to Dable and what Brandon Brown talked about uh, with Joe Shane. Brandon Brown said something along the lines of, name me one great wide receiver that's ever, you know, been a, sta in, in so many words, been standoffish, not been a guy that's been a, an alpha that's demanded the football. So the, it actually appears the Giants were looking for those types of characteristics. Dable did go on to say to neighbors, well, they were talking that you're going to have to learn how to dial that back as you grow throughout the NFL and even pointed to himself as a head coach and basically saying that he's working on that himself. Right. A lot of negative media came out with him last year being as, a, you know, an explosive figure on the sidelines. Um, but he, you know, he kind of talked to neighbors how he feels he will have to improve that. But, you know, that's part of the learning curve. But I just thought that was interesting. A lot of people thought they may go with the Dunze because maybe his personality wouldn't fit what they were looking for at the position. As a matter of fact, it was the complete opposite. So I thought that was cool. Um, well, let's get into the uh, Saquon Barkley talk because that's obviously going to be a major topic of conversation. Barkley all along, uh, while he was a New York Giants, always said that he wanted to retire a New York Giant. He wanted to be a New York Giant no matter what. And in this episode, you got to hear a conversation between Joe Shane and Saquon Barkley. Joe Shane previously, right before he called Saquon, called Saquon's agent. And his agent was kind of feeling Shane out to, I guess, get his uh, feeling on how he feels about Saquon, whether or not he would feel okay letting him walk. Um, and Shane kind of, you know, stood strong. You know, that's, that's how I took out of it, that he's not going to break the bank for him, but he would love to have him back. He views him as a great giant, as a great leader in the locker room so on and so forth, all the right things. And then when he talked to Saquon, it felt like Saquon kind of gave off the vibe as he was just drained, right? And and, and Shane kind of gave off the same vibe. If you listen to him, not just in this show, but in press conferences throughout this offseason, they both felt like they were drained of the topic. And, and in the end, you know, they fought so much last year trying to come to a, a, an agreement point that Shane said, I'm not even going to bother tagging you this year. I'm going to let you hit the open market. And he made Saquon or he asked Saquon to promise him to let, let, let come back with whatever you get offered from the Philadelphia Eagles or whoever it may be. It turned out to be the Philadelphia Eagles um, to give us an opportunity to match it. Now, I don't know. And we're going to find out, I guess, in the next episode or two. I don't know if he does end up coming back to the New York Giants, but whether he comes back or whether he doesn't. And they show a hint, which I actually misinterpreted. I posted on Twitter. I later, later deleted it because. I think I misinterpreted it, but they showed a preview to episode three where Shane, what I heard was I offered him 25 million guaranteed and 12 and a half million dollars a year, which almost equates 
exactly to the Eagles contract. And I said, well, then he didn't really want to be a New York Giant. But a lot of people correct me and they said, if I offered that, he would be a New York Giant. So that may be what we find out in the next episode. We'll have to wait and see. But regardless, it just seems like Barkley, and I don't blame him, was trying to get them as much money as he could. And it is what it is. As a Giants fan, I'm happy. Um, because I don't think the Giants are in a place, as I've said for a long time, as much as I love Saquon, they're not in a place to give him that kind of contract. The team's got an awful offensive line. He's 27. Like Shane noted several times throughout that uh, episode, running back start to fall off a cliff in a year or two. It doesn't make sense for where we currently are as a team to pay him that kind of money. So, and he kind of, you know, he did the same thing with McKinney. I think the vibe we've got from Shane at this point is, He's not going to overpay positions that he feels are not of significant importance. He puts positional value. Obviously, edge rusher, offensive line, those are positions he's going to invest heavily in. Spent a first-round pick on a tackle. Spent a first-round pick on an edge. uh, Signed a record-breaking deal or near-record-breaking deal for Dexter Lawrence. Signed a near-record-breaking deal for Andrew Thomas at the left tackle. Um, You know, obviously drafted JMS relatively early. Traded for Brian Burns. Paid him a near-record-breaking contract. So he clearly values the line of scrimmage. Um, And he's not going to overly commit to running backs and safeties. And as much as that may hurt some fans, as much of of a fan favorite Saquon Barkley was, I do think that's the proper approach. You can build a run game if you have a strong offensive line. The question is, will Shane be able to build that strong offensive line? Were the minor changes he made this year? Well, not minor, significant changes. John Runyon, of course, Illuminor bringing in Brasillo. Will those changes result in at least a mediocre offensive line? Will Brian Burns coming over to the New York Giants result in an upper echelon pass rush? Can the Giants get a consistent pass rush against the Dallas Cowboys? Something they haven't been able to do for 10 years. Sure, you get a pass rush against a crummy football team, but can you generate a pass rush against Dak Prescott? Something you haven't been able to do for the most part since he's been in the NFL. That's the questions that need to be answered. And if we can, well, the Giants may surprise some people this year, but we'll have to wait and see. But that's what he prioritizes, so I'm not surprised in the end, that he didn't sign Saquon Barkley. I don't think anybody should be, especially for the money that he got. I think the Giants would have been fools to pay Barkley that money. Not that he's not worth it. I think for the Eagles, you can make an argument that he may be worth it because they're a team that it could at least argue, listen, we have all the pieces in place. They lost Kelsey, but they still have a strong offensive line. They got a good defense, right? They feel that they're in a Super Bowl window. Makes more sense to pay a 27-year-old running back that right there, not for the Giants. Um, The other thing, like I kind of hinted at earlier that I found really interesting throughout this episode was uh, Dable's handling of the quarterbacks. It was really cool to see our head coach, a known quarterback guru, of course, his work with Tua Tango Vailoa, uh, uh, Brett Favre, Josh Allen, uh, Jalen Hurts, a number of quarterbacks, you know, both through the NFL and collegiate ranks um, to get to see him, you know, throw rapid fire questions at these quarterbacks, throw rapid fire questions at Jaden Daniels when he was asking him. What's the formation I just told you? Read it back to me real quick. Then he did it again later in the interview. He was trying to catch him off guard to see how well he picked up things that he was throwing at him, which, of course, is important as a quarterback. Um, they showed Drake Mago through that, J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy was like, he was like writing out sentences. <laughs> and I think like the Giants were looking, they didn't say it because, they're you know, but they were nice about it. But they were like, they were like, that's uh, just just write the X's and O's like like uh, McCarthy was writing like full sentences. It was weird. I'd never seen a quarterback do that. He said, that's how Jim Harbaugh does it uh, at Michigan. But, um, yeah, it was just cool to see Dable throw out all those rapid fi- rapid fire questions and really analyze these quarterbacks. And it just shows you, like Joe Shane said throughout that uh, entire episode, that they have a different process for the quarterback position. It's much more rigorous. Uh, they really have to dive into it. So I thought that was cool, too, to get a firsthand look at that. But overall, I think the Hard Knocks experience thus far has been great. I've enjoyed it thoroughly as a fan, and I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to seeing how it all plays out um, next week when we get more answers as to how the uh, how the Burns trade officially went down. You know, did they do any more deep diving into potential trade opportunities in the draft? Did Barkley come back to the New York Giants to potentially match an offer? So it should be a lot of fun. Um, and so far it's been great. I'm just excited to be back on here talking Giants football with you guys. Um, I'll be live, like I said, next week at some point. Definitely let you guys know. And the videos will start coming out right around when training camp starts. So that's in about 10 days. So I'll try to have up at least two, you know, two videos a week, especially as football season gets churning. I'm going to be a, 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 a solo live once a week, the Bad Dog Show, you know, once a week. And, I'll, you know, as always, I'll try to work with 
specific content creators here and there. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm excited uh, to dive into this season with you guys. But as always, thank you guys for watching. And if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.